and or musicians say so that I like to orchestrate their works which is what I did in abductees we're going through abductees now and chucking away some of this stuff that we don't want to keep abductees is about um, people who've been abducted by UFOs the designs in abductees were based on the drawings that the abductees themselves did. So, and that was the, the start point for the film, was the drawings that these people do, because the drawings themselves are great. It's the only way they have of visualizing what happened to them. They're, they're always asked to do drawings, you know. The, end of the first thing that anyone says is, can you do a drawing of what you saw? So we, we had to put in all the all the light effects are not in these drawings yet, so they may be junk, except they're kind of nice. It seemed like a natural. To try and bring these drawings to life from the animation point of view. Um, the documentary side of it was very easy because I could just do talking heads, um, which gave me a structure because I could use the talking heads as a voiceover to carry the whole film, which hopefully would explain everything. You said they were red. Yes, the, 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 uh, the being at the window was, was pure red. Um, and uh, very, very black. I mean, incredibly piercing. Just, just holes in his head. Uh, he communicated to me with a kind of a telepathy, which was so strong Maybe I was very sensitive, but if it was a radio, he could have turned it to two, and I would have heard very well, but he turned it up to about 20, so it was like, we're not going to hurt you! And it was, you know, everything else went out of my head. It was terrifying. It was just almost like a blossom in my head. To be quite honest with you, when I'm outside and I walk and I see crowds of people on Wall Street and Axel Street, you know, I look at them and I say to myself, I wonder how many of them have been abducted. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a flood. I don't know how many people there actually are, but I would estimate at least, at least in this country anyway, in the tens of thousands, probably more. The screen memory in the classical psychological sense <clears throat> means that the person sees a, a traumatic, uh, traumatically frightening event and then softens it by inventing some other story. But this is not that. This is not something that the person makes up himself or herself. This seems to be an image which is externally imposed into that person's memory by the aliens themselves. You know, it, it was just strange to me. And then I realized that they weren't wearing goggles. That was their eyes. And they weren't wearing helmets, that was the shape of their head. The thing that they will always start to draw first is the eyes, because they, the eyes are so arresting. It's difficult to even... Re you might not remember anything else but the, the look of the eyes. The only thing I could really compare it to was that there were like 1950s Italian wraparound sunglasses that went around the, to the side of his head. Basically, what, what had happened was uh, I was coming up the stairs, and then the next thing I remember was suddenly walking down the street with these two very, very tall, blonde men with strange blue eyes. How, how am I supposed to know what is coming out under hypnosis? Uh, were they dreams, or uh, was it real? Maybe it's just dreams that have been coming out under hypnosis. I heard a sound, but again, everything sounded slowed down. I looked over, and both of the other guys in the band were sitting there with their mouths open like O's, you know? And uh, one of them was saying, oh my God, but again, everything sounded slowed down to me. Like, oh my God, like that. I felt that someone was pounding on my back, and that's all I remembered. After that, everything was, the next thing I knew, uh, I'm running through the living room, and I knew what had happened. I just didn't remember what happened after that. I remember seeing the curtains, like uh, uh, blow over my head. The first day was the pounding on my back. I, I, I saw the, 
curtains like blow over my head. And that was all I remembered up until, and then I consciously remember running through the living room and I thought my children were gone because when I went in there, they weren't breathing. What I thought was the uh, bedroom curtain at in actuality was the nightgown that went over my head. What the pounding on the back was, I don't know. I think on one occasion, I actually saw these using their forearms to move more quickly, that they were almost like scurrying, almost like an ape kind of movement. These didn't move that way. I've also seen these sort of, the, another particular characteristic, I've seen some of them move in like lockstep, like a bunch of them in a row, just moving completely together as if all their movements were completely coordinated. They'll cock their head from side to side, and also if they get excited, these, these kind of, will, their head will start like bobbing or wobbling like that. He didn't actually walk. He just seemed to kind of float along, which might be important in the animation. The little ones were not the same. How did the little ones move? As I recall, they moved just kind of like us. They like were doing things, they were busy moving around, whereas he just seemed to flow. He was very, very graceful. And they were not particularly graceful. They were more like little, little dentist workers or something. <laughs> One thing that uh, very clear in every regression, a terrible pain in my right nostril. And I believe what they did was they put an implant in, which eventually came out because I had a hole in my right nostril that bled for about six months when I was 12, which was my only physical evidence. And then someone, one of them, comes over to me with this thing that looks like a pick, a dental pick. Mm -hmm. a pick. Yeah. And he looks at me straight in the eyes. eyes. Do you know mm -hmm. that yeah. they look wet? They look wet. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do? And he comes closer with his instrument and, 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 and he's putting it up my, my, my nose. Oh, he's hurting me. Okay, now we're going to turn that pain down very quickly. It's just very <laughs> quick, and now it's gone. I guess I can describe it like this, that if, the, if you were to look in the water, you'd see part of the ship sort of like coming out from underneath the water, and then part of it was in the, in, in the ground. So it's sort of like half showing. about here. It went, yeah, whether there was more to it here. No. Just point, if you like, because... It went, it went out like that, and it was over to there. And I think that they moved my legs aside, too, to, for, so it would have better access, but it would come up to about here. Yeah. And then look. Well then, the, I didn't, as I said, I couldn't see anything else. It was just there, and I suddenly felt like a pressure sensation in my, around my kidneys. And then, a, like a moment later, I felt, I didn't feel any excitement or any, it, it didn't feel sexual at all. Just in the next moment, I had that sort of tender feeling that one has after one has had an ejaculation. I see them now. They're shaking. They're, they're stiff. They can't. They they move fast, kind of, but they're stiff. 
the arms are like straight down at their sides. Uh, I don't know. Uh, whether it's like one's being tested or observed or what, but it's like being put into scenarios, like being put into um, a film, suddenly you're boom, you're someplace else in this situation. I remember a couple where I had to make a choice about um, you know, taking life or not taking life or, where, or having to make terrible choices in that way. I'm a couple of feet over the bed and just sort of settle down into it. I'm looking at my hand because it looks like there's uh, this, this fuzzy stuff all over. I'm looking down, it's all over the middle of me and all over my arms. This fuzzy stuff's still on me, but as I move around, I'm starting to move around and of like evaporates. Okay. I think at this point, Rusty, <clears throat> I'm going to wake you up and we can come back to this another time. When I count from five back to one, at one you'll be fully awake. The great sense of relief, a great sense of accomplishment, a great sense of putting the pieces together that haven't made any sense up until now. So five, you're starting to wake up. Four, waking up. Three, almost awake. Two, one, fully awake. How do you feel? Reality, fantasy, you know, picnic, sunbeam, I don't know. You can always recognize um, an animator in his work, you know. However well designed a character is before the animator gets hold of it, by the time they've finished with it, it always looks like them. It moves like them. So I would say that I think my greatest strength is working with animators and, in, and letting them do what they do well but also somehow incorporating it into my vision. If I was asked to sum up my work, I would say it was, it was short. <laughs> <laughs>